Alright, uh, hello again everyone. everyone, welcome back to the series where I talk about all the games I played in the previous month. The month for this video is January of 2024, the first month of the entire year. So as always, let's just get right into it and let's find out how I started off my 2024, my leap year. I genuinely can't remember if I mentioned this last time or how far into it I was, but I've been playing Marston Forest on the channel, Mill Millen and the Forest Gift. It starts off as an alchemy, point and clicky style of go here, get item, talk to somebody else. Solve that, do this over here, bounce around till you finish it. That's how the first a few hours are. Ever since then, it's been a dungeon crawler. Odd. <laughs> I, it's one of those games that's going to like pull the rug off from under you no matter what you expect, unless you really know what you're going into. If you think you're going into a dungeon crawler, like what's this pointing, what, what's this uh, problem solving item collecting shit? If you're going expecting that, you be like, wait, why is it a dungeon crawler now? It, it's an odd game. It's cute, it's it's creative, it's weird. I fucking love it. Like, I have fallen so far in love with this game that I, I, I'm shocked. I did not expect it to be this good. The characters are fascinating, the story is really pulling me in. The enemy design is fun, the combat is so simplistic. But they do it so fucking well. And they just make it a joy to go through it. You go from layer to layer, every layer is different, some have doors open, some have chests open, some have little traps, some have weird stuff going on, some have, there's always something new. The combat evolves as you move on, it's not the same from start to finish. This is easily going to be one of my favourite experiences this year I think, and it's such an underrated game. If there's any game I can recommend I've played in probably the last like 5 or 10 years, that I think everyone should go and try, this is it. This is such an underrated little gem, and it's so cheap. Went to the completely blind here to play it and I I don't think I've ever had, I've had very few experiences this positive going into something with no experience or no information. Actually this month is going to be mostly talking about stuff we've been playing here and on Twitch because I really didn't play a lot of different stuff in my spare time this month. I'm still pushing through Metal Gear Solid 1 which is still fun. I did all the VR missions, there's three fucking hundred of them. It's mostly kind of the same thing. Kill this enemy with a soul cop. Now kill these two enemies with a soul cop without getting caught. Now do... There's five of those. and you five of them with a time limit. Repeat that for every weapon. With different... There's different enemy plays. But it's not, it's not the same layout with different guns. But one thing I did not know... There's some twisty stuff here. There's some weird... Fun, creative things. Like a puzzle mode. Where you have to throw an enemy or kick an enemy into a hole. To try to kill every enemy but one attack with a weapon by blowing them into each other and hit two enemies they'll go this way and it'll keep scattering out there's mysteries we're like find the the enemy who is you know who killed this enemy they have bad eyesight and then if you look at the enemies find out which one would not be able to see you properly stuff like that i never knew about all this little fun little stuff in the game there are a ton of fun and it really broke up the monotony of okay do things with five weapons do this with a stinger missile there's some fun wacky stuff here. I'm trying to get the Platinum Trophy which all I have to do is finish the game on hard mode without using I think one or three rations or not getting caught. It's crazy. I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Probably be the last time I talk about it unless I get the Platinum next month. Which I might have a brief thing to say about. I'm mostly done. I had fun with it despite problems with the remaster and the, the Master Collection. It's still Metal Gear Solid 1. It's still a blast to play. It's still a masterpiece. In honour of Prince of Persia Lost Crown or whatever the new one is, I decided to go back and play the very original, or at least the remaster for the Super Nintendo, because I wasn't really in the mood to be dealing with trying to get the Apple II PC version, whatever it was. So I went to the remaster. This game is fucking... It, it, it is hard. It is hard. I won't pretend it's not. The first level took me two episodes. Like, one... The first one was 43 minutes. Didn't get to the end of the level. I got, like, I think it was, like, 11 rooms in. You have to avoid traps, which is basically, you know, jump over a hole, land on a switch, go through a gate before it closes. Sometimes, like, there'll be three little blocks in the middle one will fall. This one will open the gate. This one will close it, so you have to try to jump over it. Mo it's a very, very slow-paced game. Most of the times you will die in this game are going to be from tiny things. And it, it can be very methodical. The absolute, like, I will say, I am absolutely loving the game more than I feel like I should. Like, it sucked me in fast. I, like I said, I spent over 40-something minutes, and that, failing at the same level. I think I even sped up some of that just to not have it repeat. So I spent, we'll say an hour, failing in the same 11 rooms. And the first eight of them were probably simple. 
It was just trying to figure out how to finish one little part. It was awkward. But I pushed on. And that doesn't include how long it would have taken me in the second attempt. Wait, second episode was 30 minutes. I finished one level in over an hour and a half to two hours. And I kept going. If that doesn't give you an idea of how much I find this game charming and compelling, I don't know what, what else could. Second level wasn't nearly as hard. Uh, they also introduced like sword fighting, which is you have two attacks. You can stab or you can block. I, I tend to just stab until I win. They're pretty easy, but they, they are fun. My two biggest flaws with this game. One, you literally tap. And I'm talking... Tap. That. The tiniest tap you can do. You will move like halfway across the screen. He won't just go like that. He'll just go whoop. A big fucking skip. That's one big problem. Because sometimes you have to be very specific. So you're just there. The only other way to move forward as far as I can tell without going that far. Is to duck. So if you want to go here but walk him put you over here. You just be like whoop 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 whoop. Okay there we go. Which is very necessary for dropping. You know, dropping without killing yourself. Problem two. Which is 50 times more frustrating. Actually, It can ruin the game sometimes. I have probably died at least 30 times. Because I will press the jump button. Nothing will happen. I'll just be like tap tap tap. Why do, he won't jump. I think you have to time it weirdly well. Like The best way to describe it is like he's doing his run. And if you press at the wrong spot in his run animation. He won't jump. So the amount of times we're like okay I'm going to jump. Whoa, 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 boop. One time five in the same fucking place. It, I think if it happened one more time in that one section. I would have just quit. Because it was in the first go. But despite two one minor problem one f oh i've probably died like 50 times in this game in like two hours but i want to push on because i do genuinely love it i think i'm just in my weird little era of hating myself where i want myself to suffer through games like this and tom and jerry as long as you're even a tiny bit fun for some reason i just i push through it's just maybe it's just a weird time for me <laughs> i mean my hair classic nostalgic error i don't know genuinely though one of my favorite super nintendo games i've ever played and i can't wait to play more i can't wait to see how, wait, wait, wait to see how it goes also there's a time limit of two hours so that's gonna be fun <laughs> i can't wait to get to the very end like two minutes left and realize oh well i gotta start again or with a password but yeah it's fun try it out i tried the demo of the actually you no know, segue i also played the demo for the new Prince of Persia about a week before I started it or probably about two days before I started this I don't like it it does nothing for me I'm sure for other people it seems to be having a big splash but I prefer the original from what I played in in the demo who knows how close it is to the original because I think they to avoid spiders they said they put it in a spot not in the game or something different I don't know maybe they changed some things to make it not exactly the same with the Super Nintendo game I was instantly hooked like I cannot explain how instantly I was just in. I like I knew very quickly this is fun. Even if I'm suffering, it's fun. With the new game, it did nothing for me. But again, I only played the demo. Not gonna judge. I'm just saying, zero interest in buying it. But I'm sure a lot of other people have a lot of fun with it. It seems to be doing well. As for Twitch, like streaming, all I've been doing is Tales of Grace. I've been pushing my way through that. For anyone who doesn't know, the Tales is a very big JRPG franchise. Graces is the only one I've ever come close. Actually, I have finished the main story just a couple of days ago because it's the PS3 redone version. It has a little 10... Like, apparently, it's like a 10-hour post game. Did I, I knew it was a post game stuff. I didn't know it was like 10 hours of full-on story. I streamed this over like 45 hours. Fucking love it. Like, I... Ever... Like, I like the Tales franchise in terms of the few games I have played, I guess. This is the only one I can say I love. Berseria, the few hours I did play great time with it i definitely want to go back to it at some stage that was years ago so i'll have to start that again definitely going to stream it at some point and i played a tiny bit of zillia D it didn't do much for me the time i did i'll go back to it i'll play like an hour maybe two but even just visually this is the only tales game where i've ever looked at and thought yes this looks unbelievable i really want to try it and it definitely paid off i think in terms of like character design and art style it's easily my favorite i've seen between a card game that they have and other little things, there is a lot of nods and references to the old games. And I will have to, I, I'm going to be honest, the cards you could collect in this game to use in a card game, which are characters from previous games and you, you get lines of dialogue, has done more to make me want to play the old games than 
any trailer, any information, anything people talking about it ever. So that's definitely on my list too. I can't wait to play more Tales games. Graces might always be my favourite, who knows. But the story, the characters, the animated cutscenes, everything. I was hooked. 45 hours, I think there might have been like an hour of content spread out that I didn't love. But I was never bored. I was never absolutely hating the game. And I'd probably play through it again in my own time for other stuff. Which is a lot of post-game content, a lot of secret bosses. I, I'm, I've already scratched the surface. It's a game I played through 99%. I think I literally got to the final boss about 10, no, about 8 years ago. And I was like, okay, I, I can get my ass kicked. I'll come back to it. I didn't come back to it <laughs> until I played through the whole game again on stream. But yeah, I love this game. Absolutely every second of it, of my 45 hour journey, I mostly enjoyed. And now the post game I've done like two hours of so far, still love. Can't wait to finish it off. By the time you see this, who knows, maybe I will have. I won't have. But I'll be close. <laughs> but yeah, that's everything I did in January. January. Wasn't a ton, I'll admit. Most of the stuff is stuff I did for the channel or on stream, which I guess that's one of the benefits. But like, as I said, most stuff I did off that it was just kind of stuff I've been finishing up on. I, I guess I've been watching things and other stuff more than playing games this month. But yeah, as always, let me know what you've played this month. Let me know what new stuff you played, what you've gone back to. And I'll see you for the next one. Where I will have a great month to talk about. I'll have, definitely have a lot more new stuff to talk about. With certain, certain big games coming out that I cannot wait for. See you then.